you're watching a full test drive review of the Kia EV6, and this is wintertime. Now go ahead and watch the other EV6 videos on the internet in sunny California, then come back here if you're serious about buying this car or just wanna know what an EV is really like in the winter. It's 20 degrees here, I'm cold, the car is cold, my crew has icicles right now, but you're gonna see Kia like never before. This is honestly one of the most exciting cars I've driven in a while and not just because it's fully electric. And I'm gonna be real with you guys because you deserve to know the good and the bad of driving an electric car in the cold weather. Three years ago, I had a Kia Nero EV in a snowy New England winter just like now. That was a decent electric car, even though it looked old and boring. A lot changed in three years, and by a lot, I mean everything. We're so used to Teslas, we don't see them anymore. The EV6 dropped from a spaceship all the time, from all angles. It's warping my conception of what a car or a crossover can be. The last time I felt this stunned by any car's exterior design was the BMW i8. That was a plug-in hybrid coupe costing $135,000. That was eight years ago, and this car starts at $41,000. I feel like I'm standing next to a concept car that Kia has to take away and put into storage, but this is a mass market production car. That's how cool this thing is. It looks like blown glass. It's very subtle. There's not too many creases on here, but you got this nice wide shoulder line. That makes the car look significantly wider than it is. The only other EV that looks like this is the Jaguar I-Pace, and I think Kia's done a better job. They certainly did a better job than the Nero EV. That thing looks kind of nerdy. This looks like Rihanna at the Met Gala. You're looking and you can't look away. Now, what are some of the details? These angry looking headlights, this really aggressive sloped clamshell hood, that's really cool. 20 inch fan wheels. They look like fans that I wouldn't want to put my hands near. That's how sharp they are. And the rest of the car with this matte paint, it's exclusive on this silver trim here, but any way you look at it, it's just cool looking. I think it's gonna last. There's more details from behind, like how this sill traces through the rear fender, goes right up through the wheel, and connects to those arcing taillights. They actually, the whole deck lid spoiler is a light. That's pretty amazing. Look at the rear spoiler up here. It's got twin ducts like a Bugatti. The air goes straight through them, kind of like NACA ducts in a way, and there's lights underneath them. They're kind of like wingtips from the side, they're raised. Even the mirrors have wingtips on them. To be honest, the more you look at this car, the more things you see and it's just interesting to look at. The EV6 is a wide car, but not wide for cargo. Back here, the load floor is actually so high because there's a giant battery underneath it that you only get 24 cubic feet behind the seats and 50 when they're folded. That's most like a subcompact SUV. The cabin is several sizes up. Because this is an all new car on a dedicated EV chassis, there's more space than in the Nero. No drivetrain tunnels, nothing to work around. The floor is flat, there's room to stretch, a ton of it in the rear. I wish there was a panel roof, but back here, the seats are heated and they recline. The dash layout is linear and straight, very much unlike the exterior. You got the air vents, those are square. The ambient lighting, diagonal. The dash graphics, same thing. Even the steering wheel doesn't like being round. The center console floats. There's a gap between the dash, like it's a bridge under construction. That's where the seat climate controls live. The ignition button is like a computer power button. The gear selector, a high-tech hockey puck. And this wireless charger is cooled and wide enough for all the new phones. I think Kia could be more clever with the use of space, particularly it's wasted. Like, I could put my foot here, but what can I actually put here that's useful? All the charging cords and power outlets, they're down here. I'd have to drag wires up here. And the shelf is nice, but what else is there but just like a little basket for random things? You're not going to put anything actually tall in this space. If they could move this back, have it slide, have some more openings other than this central cubby, then they'd be onto something. What's also crazy the first time I drove this car, the knobs and the type change before your eyes. Here, it's the climate, and now it's the stereo and shortcuts. Very cool, but I keep switching them so often, I wonder why couldn't they both be on this dash? Again, there's plenty of room in here. Still, I love that Kia took chances inside here. I mean, look at the shape of these seats. It's like I'm about to blast off somewhere. Overall, all these materials are pretty good. You got some faux suede, vegan leather. That's just a nice way of saying it. fake leather so they don't have to pay for real leather. Whatever, it looks good, it feels good. I'll show you what these screens do later because I'm gonna drive. Oof, this thing gets up and goes. As you'd expect in an electric car, this is all the power I think 
most anyone would need. The GT is going to have 576 total horsepower. This one has just 320. But it's got 446 pound-feet of torque because there's two motors in this car. Front, back, all-wheel drive, electric all-wheel drive, and it's tuned really well. doesn't matter if I'm on the tarmac or on snow. It's routing the power perfectly. Yeah, I love it. And the drive modes here, there's four of them. You hit it with just a button on the steering wheel like this. So you can kick it back into eco, normal, or sport when you just want a little boost. Hold it down for snow, and it modulates the whole throttle, everything. Well, there's not really a throttle in an EV, right? There's almost nothing. Everything is drive-by-wire, including the brakes. There's two different settings for the brake pedal. So you can really fine-tune this car. This is a heavy car. This one's about 4,600 pounds, and more than a 1,000 of that is just a battery pack. But despite that, this thing gets up and goes. It has no issue. These are the specs on the lower trims. As you can see, the base car has half the power because it has one motor and a smaller battery. All the others have the larger 77 kilowatt hour battery with more powerful motors. The EV6 is rear wheel drive based and it's also rear wheel drive biased. That means that essentially at all times it's using the rear wheels only, only a single electric motor for efficiency and when it needs that front motor it's typically during acceleration and hard cornering. That's a nice balance and you can see how all four wheels are moving right on the display here. I'm not really into fake engine and spaceship noise sounds on EVs. You can turn that off, so let's turn this off. There's nothing, that's just the actual motors. If I wanna actually hear it, well, Kia lets you change so many settings here. You can actually customize it to map the throttle, you can change the volume, you can change the whole entire sound. Ooh, dynamic, stylish, and cyber. Frankly, these are all a little too scary for me, so I'm gonna just turn that off because the whole point of an EV, in my opinion, is the silence. That's why you're not driving a gas engine car, and it's very, very quiet in here. You can tell they've put all the insulation and weather stripping, everything possible in here because it's a very quiet, serene ride, as it should be. This is not a cheap car anymore. These paddles on the steering wheel are not shift paddles because there's only one gear. They're for braking. The brake region has four different settings depending on which side you tap. So on the left side, you go from level zero, which is coasting, to one, to two, to three, to max, where that becomes eye pedal. Now it's stopping the car for me without me even touching the brakes. That's if you like one pedal driving. I typically don't, but that's there. And if you go backwards, you can increase the level up on this side. And then if you hold it, it becomes automatic. That will use the adaptive cruise control, the radar sensors, to try to pace you with the car in front. And that also has multiple settings as well. So there's a lot of different ways to stop. And if you go in the touchscreen, there's two more modes to change how the brake pedal feels between normal and sport. So I've never braked so hard in my life so many different times. Unlike many EV automakers, Kia has a winter mode. This is a great thing if you're in a cold climate like where I am in Massachusetts today. It optimizes the battery to keep it warmer. And that basically means, yes, it's using more charge, but it's keeping it at a more constant level of charge. Because a lot of EVs with these batteries, as soon as the temperature drops, it's 26 degrees right now, you're losing that charge level. And this has actually been pretty consistent even when I've left it parked overnight in equally cold weather. So that's really nice. It also has the heated steering wheel, heated rear seats, and a heat pump. So unlike a lot of other EVs, like the Jaguar I-Pace, for example, that uses resistive heat, that's a ton of electricity. That's using like essentially like baseboard heat in your house. That's why you don't turn that on because it costs a ton of money. Well, in an EV, it draws a lot of power, which means less range. In this car, the heat pump is just a more efficient way of heating the air by using the outside air. So it doesn't use nearly as much energy, but when you select the button on here, man, it does get hot really quickly. That's what you want. You don't wanna wait for a little coil to heat up. You want it to be hot within minutes, even less. This car actually, I think it heats up faster than a gas car. That's pretty impressive. So if you're living in a cold climate, you need to consider things like that. It is sporty. The width helps. That's what keeps this car so stable and sure-footed, but this is not a sporty tune by any means because it does roll a bit when you really push the vehicle. 
but that's when you're really just hammering it. But Kia wants you to do that. It's clear that this car is tuned for fun. It's not just a commuter car. It's not a basic EV. Kia has those vehicles and other EVs, yeah, they started like that, but we're finally reaching the point where a mass market car that's not a $100,000 Tesla or a $200,000 Porsche Taycan is accessible for people that just want to get up and go. <laughs> now, the not so fun part, charging. Starts off with some good news. The EV6 runs on 800 volts, which is double that of most normal electric cars. And when it's charging, it can accept up to 240 kilowatts. That's almost as much as Tesla's can at the supercharger stations. And that's more than double what the Kia Niro EV can do. In most cases, the automakers quote charging times and ranges when going from about 20 to 80%. I did that from about 15% to 80% at an Electrify America station rated at 350 kilowatts, the fastest in the country. At that level, Kia promises 217 miles of range in 18 minutes. In my testing, I gained 150 miles in 35 minutes. That's with the cold, with the heat on, and the EV6 in winter mode, which uses a little bit more power to keep that battery at the right proper condition. But that's nowhere close to what Kia claims. And what's worse, that charge cost me $27. That's more expensive than most gas cars, even with $4 per gallon gas. If you fast charge, you overpay. So you have to charge the EV6 at home to see the savings. In my testing, range was also way off. Kia claims 274 miles EPA with this particular trim, the GT line all wheel drive. But I used 80% of the battery to drive 143 miles. And in another test, I used over 70%, just over, to travel 125 miles. So that's pretty inefficient. Now maybe this will change, obviously, in warmer weather, in more favorable conditions, but just like every EV I've ever tested in cold weather, the EV6 still fails to measure up. But the EV6 over delivers on technology. Check out the head-up display, which uses augmented reality to project arrows for navigation, just like on the new Mercedes S-Class. The highway driving assist is fantastic and very easy to monitor how the car is tracking the lane and other cars. The cameras and the views are exceptional. The Meridian stereo has active noise canceling. The battery can charge another EV or power anything from the charging outlet for up to 36 hours. The Kia EV6 starts at 40,900. Even in base form, it's better than the Nero EV. The one you'll want is about $50,000 since it has the larger battery and motors. This EV6 GT line all wheel drive is 58,200 with destination, and the GT is gonna cost more than 60. This is the most expensive Kia you can buy. For a Kia, it's actually a terrible value. It's just as expensive as a Tesla Model Y or a Ford Mustang Mach-E. But the EV6 makes me excited, and the fact that it's not a Tesla and feels like a genuinely good car, that's why I'd recommend it. From a cost perspective, no. The Kia EV6 does not make sense, especially not at 60 grand. The charging speeds, the cold weather range, they're only adequate. But Kia has some real magic here. The design, the technology, performance, real performance. As Kia's first ground up EV, color me impressed. If you wanna know more, read my full review at cargurus.com. Subscribe to the Car Gurus YouTube channel. We have a lot more EV reviews and tons of other videos coming out every week. So be sure to watch it. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.